What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you'd like to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I deserve those weapons and armor far more than any of them. If he could only get his hands on that legend class gear, he confidently believed, he, too, could join the lofty ranks of the single digits. Gaster's mind was occupied with all these fantasies, but he wasn't letting his guard down during this op. Hmm? Something changing in the forest? The sound around him suddenly stopped. It was the first time he'd ever experienced such a thing. Abort camp preparations and take cautionary positions! Upon giving the order, Gaster focused more intently, turning his attention to the forest to his left. The atmospheric sounds of birds and animals had disappeared, no insects were chirping at all. There was something tense in the air, that, and the sound of small footsteps, as well as that of leaves rustling closer and closer. It was far off but moving quickly. They're trying to take us by surprise. Not a bad move, but they picked the wrong foe to try it on. Gaster chuckled to himself. Based on his analysis of the ambient sound, there were approximately a hundred figures approaching. They had intelligence that the demon lord's forces were gathering near the inn town, so they likely deployed out from there. It was proof positive that Calgario's plans were working out well. The demon lord's inn town forces had completely missed the main body of the imperial army. And when a 700,000 strong army weighs down upon that demon lord's throat, oh, the sheer panic they'd all experience. Just imagining the scene made Gaster smirk. Now they were a bit over six miles away. Before much longer, they'd be in range of their magic cannons. Those could fire up to 19 miles away, at the expense of accuracy dwindling to near nothing. The actual effective range was more like one and a half or two miles. Of course, with the right type of explosive shells, you didn't need to worry about accuracy. This enemy force was small, and concentrated in a tiny area. Perhaps they thought they could use the trees as cover, as long as they didn't go out in the open. Well, think again. First, let's give them a salute to liven things up. Their special ammunition was still in the prototype stage, so they could prepare only two rounds, but the blast radius could extend up to a hundred feet or so. The power of that explosion was currently unmatched by explosive magic, generating tens of thousands of degrees of heat and a concussive shockwave that could deform the terrain itself. It was a one-of-a-kind weapon, one only available on Gaster's command vehicle, but he had no intention of saving it for a rainy day. Without hesitation, he loaded it up and pointed the muzzle of his cannon into the forest. Then he barked out orders to his battalion, in the unlikely event that the enemy escaped, he wanted them to be ready to intercept. Left flank battalion, turn counterclockwise! The soldiers had been setting up tents for their encampment, but given that the Dwarven Kingdom was under 20 miles away, they were in a constant state of tension. As soon as they received the order from Gaster, they began calmly packing up the wagons the tanks were towing. It wasn't long before everyone was ready for battle. Without another moment's hesitation, the left-wing battalion of 500 tanks floated in the air, orienting itself toward the forest. Gaster and his men were ready, and as if waiting for that moment, a single monster appeared from the depths of the lush forest. It was wolf-shaped, with two horns growing out of its forehead, and its enormity was remarkable, a good 16 feet long, making it look proportional to one of their tanks. This has to be the Ranga monster reported by the IIB. They call him the Demon Lord's pet or some such nonsense, but supposedly he ranks an A-plus in battle. That made him a big deal, then. Just one? What are they thinking? Wait. Gaster considered what this wolf's mission was. If he came alone, he's not here to fight. It's probably serving as some kind of warning. It figures. You want to protect your position as Demon Lord, so you can't take any half measures. You'll regret that. As Gaster saw it, his enemy wanted to intimidate him with Ranga's towering presence, sapping his will to fight. It seems this Ramuru is quite a proud demon lord, isn't he? Trying to protect his lofty reputation by giving up the chance to surprise us? He let out a loud, ringing laugh. His officers quickly joined him, melting the anxiety among their soldiers. They were at just the right level of tension. Ranga was close to them now, his steps relaxed. He was showing no sign of a fight, as Gaster suspected, he was here to negotiate. He finally stopped about 30 feet away, right in front of the lieutenant general and his team. A woman who had been sitting side saddle on him gracefully jumped off his back, making hardly a sound as she did. Then without a care in the world, she walked right up to Gaster's vehicle. When he laid eyes upon her, this woman with beauty beyond what any human could possibly achieve, Gaster felt a chill run down his spine, like a dagger of ice had stabbed him. What? The sounds this woman makes. It's so strange. There was the sound of a heartbeat, but it was playing an eerie melody. He could hear her blood flow as well, but it was both faster and quieter than that of a human being. Too fast, even. 
If someone's blood flowed that fast, it'd be far too much for the body to bear. Now Ranga didn't even register to Gaster. His eyes were squarely upon the woman. Her long pure white hair flowed beautifully, accentuating her beauty, but her body was clothed in a stern military uniform that poorly matched her looks. The bottom of it resembled a pair of riding pants, with the thighs loosely bulging out. There was someone else riding on Ranga's back, but he didn't even register to Gaster, that's how much the eerie presence of the woman had taken over his consciousness. Who is she? The IIB said nothing about her. Ranga's considered a high-ranking official of the Demon Lords, and this woman's far more dangerous than him. Gaster felt justified in criticizing the Imperial Information Bureau, but there was no one here to complain to. More important right then was the fact that someone intimately close with the Demon Lord was here with him, so he spoke in a dignified voice to hide his overwhelming anxiety. You're an emissary from the Demon Lord Ramuru, aren't you? You contacted me quicker than anticipated, but I'm glad his officers are such thoughtful, talented people. So what is your business? The woman smiled sweetly at Gaster's question. It is a pleasure to meet you. My name is Tastarosa, and I serve the great Demon Lord Ramuru, ruler of these lands. As for why I've come here today. After saying that much, the woman's smile widened. It was a smile of pure, unadulterated evil. I convey to you the words of my master, leave here at once, and we will overlook this violation of our borders. But if you invade any farther, you will be shown no mercy. Testarossa's blood-red eyes glowed as she made her statement. Gaster nervously gasped. He tried to say, surely you're joking, or the like, but before he could, Testarossa moved. Just a light wave of the hand, but at that moment, a wall of flames appeared just a couple feet in front of the tank battalion's first row. It was gone in an instant, but on the ground, the molten remains of the fire had formed a fine line of glass in the soil. Do I make myself clear? Cross this line, and your lives will be extinguished. If you are not prepared for that, stay where you are. Now, good day to you. Testarossa gave the lieutenant general a graceful bow, then turned on her heels and walked away, as if she had lost interest in the conversation. It was her way of stating that the time for negotiating was over. Ranga, of course, was wagging his tail at her. Only the small figure swinging around on his back still took notice of Gaster, but Gaster himself no longer cared. How dare you make fun of me? Who the hell do you think you're talking to? And attempting such an obvious bluff in front of all this firepower. He was furious, as if everything he ever believed in had been shattered, and it instantly cost him his composure. She had said what she wanted to say, and she hadn't given Gaster's side even a moment of her time, the kind of approach the Empire typically used on their foes. But receiving it back in kind had ignited Gaster's anger, and any fear he felt before had disappeared. So he made the wrong decision. He was around 15 feet away from Testarossa, who was now exactly halfway between him and Ranga. Think I'll let you get away with this? Gaster made up his mind. Courtesy to emissaries was not a concern for the Empire. If they surrender, fine. If not, prepare to be overrun with all our might. That was the Empire's motto, and since Testarossa just insulted the Empire with her attitude, that was more than enough reason to begin hostilities. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, sir. Shoot that cocky bastard's head off. After that, have the 20 tanks in front fire a simultaneous volley. Let's show the demons lurking in the forest the majesty of our empire. Secretly, Gaster used his performer skill to lay down his orders. The first to react was the sniper attached to his command vehicle. Quickly, he lifted up his rifle and took aim at Testarossa, and then the long-range spellgun fired off a silent shot. This was an enhanced version of the standard magic-powered spellgun, its range extended to over a mile. At only a couple dozen feet away, she was as good as dead. The bullet inside was infused with the elemental magic fireball. And what would happen if a bullet filled with that ripped into your body? Well before the target could think about it, they'd explode into flames, burning from the inside out. Even if a monster was naturally resistant to magic, that resistance often didn't extend to its internals. There was no way to escape from a bullet traveling faster than the speed of sound, and Gaster was thus assured of Testarossa's impending death. But the moment the bullet was released and over the threshold, Testarossa turned around, her face so evil, and so beautiful. Gaster's eyes widened in astonishment. The bullet that was supposed to pierce Testarossa's body was stopped by a single, delicate index finger. This was a bullet fired at three times the speed of sound, packed to the gills with magic force, but that magic never released itself. Instead, it was helplessly plucked out of the air and discarded, like she was playing with some cheap toy. So that's your answer. Well, lovely. A very fine one, too. Let's make it a fair fight, then. 
With that, Testarossa joined Ranga, never looking back, and then they walked away, as if nothing had happened. Gaster almost fell into a panic, but he overcame it by sheer force of will. Fear and humiliation competed against each other in his mind, and humiliation won out. The rank and file soldiers had no idea what just happened. Only he and the sniper accurately understood. If that was how it was, time to continue as planned, and mow them down with the tank guns, their most powerful weapons. That was the best means he had to protect his pride as an imperial soldier. Lieutenant General, what should we do? Don't fall back! Don't let her tricks and illusions deceive you! We are the glorious Imperial Army, and we will bring victory to His Majesty the Emperor! Begin the bombardment as planned, now! Responding to Gaster's shouted command, the tanks deployed on the left flank went on the move. The warning had been abjectly ignored. The first row trundled forward in order to build space between themselves, and with that, the glass boundary line was broken. The war was on, and it came a lot more easily than expected. The Imperial troops didn't hesitate to step over the final warning line Testarossa had burned into the ground, and with that, we were at war with the Eastern Empire. It's on, isn't it? Yes, and this is just the beginning. Ramirez and Veldora were talking to each other, acting all haughty and laid back in their rather lofty chairs. I let out a sigh. This wasn't a game, it was real war. I wished they'd brace themselves and treat this a little more seriously. Yeah, great, uh, can you get the town evacuated now, please? Right on, just leave it to good ol' Ramirez. Ramirez cheerfully answered my request, and the next moment, without a sound, our capital city of Rimuru was quarantined in the dungeon. I had delayed this quarantine until the very last minute so we could keep pretending to be oblivious to the enemy. But now the game was over. As soon as they ignored Testarossa's advice, there was no need to hold back. Oh, I had a message from Trini. Ramirez said after effortlessly wrapping that up, as if she just remembered it. Like, she detected some fishy-looking character or something, so she's gonna go greet them. Huh? What's that mean? Well, I'm not sure I really know, either, you know? A dumb question on my part. It was useless to ask Ramirez for anything in the way of details. She didn't even work for me anyway, so I had no right to complain. Besides, we kind of got her wrapped up in this war, so I was grateful she was cooperating with us at all. And speaking of trainee, she can be pretty damn lax about things, too, come to think of it. Soe, do we need to do anything about our intruders yet? I was a little worried, so I checked with Soe. They will not be a problem for now, sir. All we have to do is keep an eye on the gate placed on the surface, as planned. Well, I was glad I wasn't overthinking it, then. It sounded like a few spies had made their way in, but Soe and his team Kurayami were making quick work of them, so I guessed there wasn't much to worry about. That's it for this video guys, thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to the new members of Anime Kohai supporters, Vicente Baharias, Stephane Duplices, Joshua Andrade, Jaya Keshav, Edmund, Zachary Shui, Mikey Avila, Omar, L. Gary Miles. Thank you so much for helping out. I'll see you guys in the next video.